Good morning, folks. This is a skeleton of an active region. No sunspots. We've got major weather, records falling. We'll hit cosmology and solar forcing as well as we begin at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours on our star were very quiet. We're seeing the equatorial coronal hole approaching center heliographic longitudes, indicating that Earth will magnetically connect to it here soon. Watch the phi angle in the coming days. Meanwhile, solar wind right now is calm. All telemetry normal or even below average in terms of ambient quiet, just like Earth's magnetic field. The atmosphere forgot what quiet means. It is back to tornadoes dropping in the states. This was in South Dakota where the southern reach of that storm system hit. Perhaps we've also heard about the major heat wave in Europe and also about the sudden drop in temperatures in Turkey. Oh, not the last one? Oh, news. Well, the jet stream tells us what's happening, shoots north of most of Europe and then dives way back down into Turkey. Let's go ahead and pull the temperature overlay next. Indeed, those are record high marks for much of Europe. But over to the east, they are seeing below average temperatures. And by the way, that includes the region of Turkey that holds the third highest temperature ever recorded on Earth. Can't fight the jet stream. Speaking of which, Assam, India is taking floods. That's far to the east. And that's what we heard yesterday. But on the west side of the subcontinent, the monsoon is still failing. Sadly, the official numbers are stacking up and... Without some kind of solar activity in the coming weeks, this monsoon could fail entirely for them this year. New solar forecast next, this time from high-level Canadian solar physicist, predicting about a sunspot number of 89 with a six-month north-south asymmetry. This falls towards the larger end of the existing forecast, but definitely within the existing range. Here are where most existing forecasts can be found. World number one, Lisa Upton, and most solar physicists suggest a similar cycle to the one we just had, about 100 in terms of sunspot number maximum. Today's Canadian forecast next, then we heard about that one NASA scientist who thinks a Dalton period is coming up, and of course then we have Zarkova at the bottom who believes grand minimum is about to begin now. So folks, when I tell you that the sun's magnetic energy has to get out somehow, this is what I mean the solar polar magnetic fields, and this energy is going to get out in sunspots whenever this trough period ends. And the amplitude of the high points in each curve determine the amplitude of the next sunspot cycle. Here, we are at the far right, so in terms of the sun's magnetic power, we have to put the observer's forecast range here with today's Canadian forecast. The range would actually be somewhere around 70 to 100, just like there is a range on each of those other forecasters there, but I did just take the middle numbers to make it easy for your visual. Time for some Nova news. Let's add another recurrent burster to the list. The longer we look, the more we will find the repetitive nature of solar outbursts rather than their finality in the stellar system. And in terms of what it takes to make the boom, some nova were once believed to only be possible with a binary system. That illusion is dissolving amidst a host of discoveries indicating that single nova progenitors, including some that are normally quiescent, are ultra-long period recurrent nova. It took us 23 episodes of Earth Catastrophe Cycle to look at all of the evidence. Our sun is one of them. Alma up next. Nice disk survey there, although in reality it looks a lot more like rings and a Taurus expose. Still taking in all of the systems in that paper, but I did want to share it with you now. Because at Earth's energetic Taurus, the Van Allen belts, we are learning more about plasma electromagnetic forces. Here we learn that the heating associated with equatorial plasma depletions comes from particles precipitating from above, and the fact that they cause dual heating. When the sun hits Earth, as it did in a solid storm in 2017, these radiation belts begin that process of depletion after ion heating. When a solar flare ionizes the ionosphere, we see the pronounced effects as well, all stirring the joule heaters to descend into the atmosphere, where they not only heat, but affect cloud condensation, as we saw in that paper last week, which is now fully published in the AGU. Folks, that was the entire missing heating mechanism of climate change just piece by piece, and you have to remember that those particles didn't stop at the top of the sky. The geomagnetic and global electric circuit systems run through every inch of the atmosphere and across the ground. This is why we could be selective in the most recent and relevant 200 papers on solar forcing of our planet's weather, technology, earthquakes, volcanoes, and more. What you saw from those last papers in today's news is this story trickling out drop by drop.
Get it today at otf.cells.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.